Visit SailRight.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this tutorial video, we'll show you how to make screen porch window roll-up enclosure panels. These roll-up curtains will prolong the use of your screen porch into the colder seasons. They are simple to roll up and down and lock in place using twist lock fasteners. Made from supplies that you can get from Sailrite using Sailrite's fabric calculator, which calculates exactly what you need to make it yourself, no matter the size or number of panels that you have. This tutorial video will show you exactly how to make them and install them yourself. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sailrite. In today's tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make roll-up screen porch enclosure panels so you can use your porch in the spring and the fall season and even when it's raining to help keep out the elements. This screened porch is ready for the cold seasons, totally enclosed now. They can be fully retracted, partially retracted, or rolled all the way up if you have hot summer days. The first step is measuring the screen window. We're going to make a screen porch roll-up uh, enclosure panel for this window. And what we need to do is measure the width and the height. Now the width, you need to have a mounting surface that is at least one inch into a solid surface. So I can go a little bit further. I'm going to go all the way to here and I'm going to make the width 46 inches. Uh, you need at least 7 8 inches of a solid surface to mount it. Otherwise you need to use the twist lock extension plates, which we'll show later on. So this is 46 inches wide. For the height, we can mount it anywhere up in this area here. But uh, if your panel went all the way to the ground, you would not want it to touch the ground. So you'd want it to be at least an inch off the ground. 73 would be two inches below here. And if I mounted it there, that should work quite well. So I've got two inches of coverage here and I have uh, five inches if you count from the screen where I will mount the uh, awning track. So in, when planning for your enclosures, you can either do them as an individual screen for each one of our screen windows, or you can do multiple screens uh, in a single panel. Uh, but they need to be less than 120 inches in width. Ours is less than that, so they will work. Now, it's a little bit hard to use the rope pulley system with this hedge in front of us. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a single panel for those two, these two, and then for this one, we'll make a single panel for this one screen. The idea being is that we can attach a cleat at that end, then that'll control those, that panel over there, for this one, we can run the line across the top and all the way through this system and attach its cleat over here along with this one that's individually done. So this one will have uh, basically, uh, well, three control lines over here, two control lines over here, all to one cleat. So you can control it without having to get in your hedge. Here's a look ahead at what we're talking about. For this large panel, we did not want to come down and have the a flagpole cleat mounted here. So what we did is we actually ran the lines through these blocks and through that last block and we have two control lines to one cleat. I'll show you how that works. So this longer line is for the larger panel and it's attached to that same cleat. So all I need to do is uncleat it and roll it up. If it rolls Unevenly, I just pull more on one line, and if it, if it bubbles, I just give it a few little jerks like that, and it rolls up nice and sweet. And then I can just cinch it to the cleat. But before we do that, let's undo this other one too and show you that. So this one controls the other shade. So I'll cinch this one to it. and then I can lock this one to that cleat. Let's go back to measuring. And there we go. So let's calculate for this panel here that's going to cover these two screens. To do that, I need to have at least a 7 8 inch overlap for our solid structure, but I'm going to go about one inch. 
If multiple curtains are side by side, leave at least one inch gap between adjacent curtains. The reason is so adjacent panels don't interfere with one another if and when panels don't roll up perfectly. Sometimes the ends cone out a bit and you don't want one panel causing another to get hung up when operating them. If I measure the whole mullion, it's three and a half inches, so I need to subtract two and a half inches from that. And then I can hook my uh, tape to this edge. If I come across here, so this is 104 with one inch into the area where we can mount, and we need to take away two and a half inches. So that would be one, oh, one and a half inches because we're measuring from the edge of that mullion. So I'm gonna write that measurement down for the width, and that is our desired finished width of this shade that'll cover the two screens. So this mullion is three and a half inches wide, which is plenty wide for our fasteners. If your mullion is uh, two and three quarter inch, then you'll need to use the twist lock extension plates, but it can't be less than one and a quarter inch. A little later on in this video, there's a chapter devoted to the extension plate for twist locks. We'll explain how to use them for mullions that are thin in that chapter. Now, for the track up here, we'll have a awning track, a flanged awning track. It can be mounted anywhere here. It could even be mounted up here. But what we've decided is we're gonna mount it right under this flange here. So there's a little flange. And so we'll measure from this to get that up as high as possible. And we'll measure down and we don't want it if it were the ground down here, we wouldn't want it to touch the ground. I just want to have coverage below here. So I'm going to go down about uh, two inches or so and measure up to this. And what I get, let's see, right about there is 73 inches. So, and I am measuring to the, where the awning track will be mounted, the top of the flange, 73 inches. We'll show that a little bit later on. This is a sample of our awning track, just a small piece. And what I'm talking about is this is the top flange. So this is where it'll be mounted. And that's where I take my measurement from. Now for this one, this is the one where we're gonna have a single enclosure panel cover this screen. We already know the height, 73 inches from the same area there, but we need to know the width here. So if I come across one inch here, over to one inch here, I get 52 inches. So that is the width of this panel, 73 inches that way. For demonstration purposes, we're just gonna work on this one window and then talk about larger windows later on. This one is 46 inches width by 73 inches length. And now we'll show you how to use Sayrite's fabric calculator to calculate your supplies. With those measurements in hand, go to the Sayrite website and click on Learn, and then click on Fabric Calculator. Here you'll see multiple calculators. We want the porch enclosure panels. You can click it there or scroll down to the bottom and click it. Here you see a drawing slash image showing the enclosure panel with letters representing the measurements you can modify below. We're going to start with the width. We measured ours at 46 and the length at 73. After entering those two measurements, the calculated fields below will automatically render. We'll be discussing these calculated fields here in a minute. Click on a question mark and you can read exactly how you should take your measurements. Jumping back to the calculated fields, C, top final fabric length, which is this portion of our enclosure, automatically assumes that when the enclosure panel is rolled all the way up, the top vinyl fabric will cover or protect the clear vinyl window. But if you want more clear vinyl window and less border at the top, simply change that amount to whatever you want, but no less than two inches. When designing your screen, porch, roll-up window enclosures, you can decide yourself whether you want a large facing at the top, which we desired because when the window's rolled up, it helps to protect the clear vinyl and even at the bottom. So if you'd like a two inch perimeter around the clear window material, all you have to do is change the entries in the Sayerite fabric calculator and you can have more glass 
than you do facing if you'd like at the top and the bottom. As the screen porch enclosure panel is rolled up, you can see that the white vinyl fabric at the top completely covers the clear vinyl window protecting it from the sun. So if the enclosure panel is left rolled up for most of the summer, that clear vinyl window material will last longer. We changed it to 3 inches, but notice the adjustment required shows 14.5 in red. That means we need to change one of the other two field measurements until that amount in red shows zero. For example purposes, we're just going to change field D, which is the clear vinyl window material length, and we'll add 14.5 inches to that, and that results in our red zero, which is perfect. Panel rendition color just means how will that panel be colored in the rendition below. We're going to choose blue and we're going to add the panel. The calculator does all the work including key dimensions and a list of materials. We're going to make our enclosure panel with the standard default so we'll go to the top of the browser and we'll refresh the screen. We'll enter our measurements of 46 and 73. We'll leave the calculated fields as they automatically calculate 17.5 for the top, clear vinyl window at 50 inches, and bottom at 5.5 inches, and we'll leave the color as goldenrod. Then click the Add Panel button. The calculator calculates the panel size, the top section panel, the size to cut it, the clear vinyl, the size to cut that, and the bottom section panel size to cut that. Then the side facing panels. Two of those cut 5 by 77 for our application. As you can see the key dimensions are helpful for cutting, hemming, seaming, and more. Now scroll down to the list of materials. All of the figures shown in blue are clickable so you can go directly to that product and it gives you the amount to order for each item. We'll continue scrolling down to the panel rendition below. This rendition shows the vinyl fabric, not the clear vinyl window material, and you can nest these so you get the best cloth usage. You can move them around just by clicking with your mouse on your desktop computer, and you can even rotate panels by clicking the right mouse key and then clicking rotate and clicking on that panel. So if you have multiple panels, you can play around with this rendition until you get the absolute best cloth usage. Remember, this is for the vinyl fabric, not the vinyl window material. Have a second panel, pick a different color if you'd like, and add that panel. Let's say we have two of the same size, so we'll add that panel, but yet it's in a different color. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we can start moving that panel in position to utilize the fabric to the best possible scenario. The Sailrite fabric calculator automatically calculates the list of materials and the size of each panel, no matter what size that panel is. If we scroll up to the top here, you can see the list of materials has added a panel number 2, and it also gives the size of that. Since it's the same, the size is the same. It also recalculates the items that are required for the number of panels and the size panels that you have, including the amount of fabric required after you've done your nesting. If you decide to delete an enclosure panel, it will recalculate the list of materials and also the key dimensions above. Now that's nice. We recommend that after you're done that you scroll to the top of your browser, click on File, and then click on Print. Then you have all of your calculations on paper and you can take it to your workbench and start to get to work. Let's discuss the extension plates for twist lock fasteners. Do you need them? Twist lock extension plates are used when your mullion is smaller than two and three quarter inches. The mullion is the uh, middle brace of the window here and I'm not going to fasten to the screen but to the solid object. So this mullion is three and a half inches wide, which is plenty wide for our fasteners. If your mullion is uh, two and three quarter inch, then you'll need to use the twist lock extension plates, but it can't be less than one and a quarter inch. They can also be used if your enclosure panel is a little shy in width after fabrication, as shown here. 
So these are the twist lock extension plates and they accommodate a twist lock fastener like this for applications where mullions are two and three quarter inches or less, but no less than one and a quarter inches wide. Um, so they would be installed like this and you would uh, have your mullion in the middle here to accommodate your enclosure panel, panel on the left side and also on the right side. So what I typically do is I put the plates side by side with the logo facing up, though the logo doesn't have to face up, so if you get one uh, the wrong way, it's no big deal. And then what I do is I position my twist lock in the appropriate spot like that, and then I know where they are installed. And to do that, I'm gonna use the uh, deluxe snap faster installation tool and a snap eyelet, quarter inch, place it on this side this side is for the button, this side's for the eyelet, and then I will take this and put it through there, put the uh, twist lock on top, and then I'll use the anvil, and I want to do this on a solid surface, and I usually use a mallet. You can use a hammer, but this works better. Give it a few blows until the uh, barrel is rolled. It's not down all the way yet, but I want to install a second one prior to making it stiff. So I'm going to put it in there and do it again. Now that it's in position, I can come back to this one and do it a little bit more firmly and the twist lock is installed. The extension plate for a twist lock fastener also works with the locks pull it up fastener, oval plate stud, one and three eighths inch, as you can see here. And here is the, uh, this, the stud application in a, in a sample window. And the neat thing is that this actually just, you pull a button up. So if this were installed like this, to uh, install it, you just simply press down and it's locked in place. And then to release it, you just pull up and it is released. So you can use the uh, plates for the locks uh, pulled up fasteners as well. It's installed in the exact same way as the twist lock stud is on the plate. For our application, our mullion was three and a half inches wide. Thus, we did not need to use them. So we mocked up two sample boards to show how it would work for thin mullions. Okay, we have um, some attached already up here at the top. What I like to do when I'm attaching these is actually mount them onto the extension plate and then lock them in place on the uh, eyelet. And then what I do is I position these uh, in, in the middle of the mullion. And you can actually mark the middle if you'd like. Right there is the middle because I, I marked it earlier. And you can see this one's slightly off a little bit because my uh, twist locks aren't directly across from each other, but that's okay. They're butted up to each other, which gives us the one inch uh, gap. And then I can just take a screw from the twist lock fastener, secure that one. And this one, I'll make sure it's butted up to it. And I'll put a, a screw in the top here. And then what I do now that it's in position is I unlock them and I make sure that they're nice and straight like that. And then I install um, the next set of screws. There we go, now we have perfect position. Beautiful. Here we have them installed in the one and a quarter inch mullion. And as you can see, when the sample pieces are fastened in place, it leaves a one inch gap, just like we desire. Measuring and cutting window material is next. We're in the studio getting ready to make the screen porch roll up clear vinyl enclosure panels. And I've got a printout from the Sayrite fabric calculator that tells me exactly how to cut each one of the panels for the top, the bottom, and the clear vinyl in the middle. So I just print that out on the computer, which makes it easy um, because a computer is definitely easier to work with 
than doing it on a smartphone. So I need to cut my clear window material to 50 by 46 inch. So this is a 54 inch wide sheet of Plastipane 30 gauge and it's 170 inches in its running length. And the first thing we want to do is we want to use a T-square and we want to straighten the bottom line because it won't come straight from the factory, which we've already done here with our T-square. So now we can take our measurements. So I'm measuring across the width because I can utilize the, the uh, window material uh, more readily this way because it's 54 inches wide and I'm marking it at 50. Then we'll mark it at 46, the other direction, which is uh, what we desire for the size or the width of our clear panel. So now we're striking a line because I measured the, over here as well. And I'm using the Scryball pencil here, which marks on the clear vinyl window material beautifully here. So that's our 50 inch line right, right there. It is exceptionally important to make sure that your rectangle is perfectly square. So I'm using the clear acrylic ruler and lining it up to make sure that everything is nice and square. And it is, so we're ready to cut it to size. Now when you're cutting the clear vinyl window material, use a good pair of scissors and take your time. It's important that this is accurate because everything is going to line up to the edge of the clear vinyl window material. It's, if you make a mistake and if you deviate, it's not a big deal, but it just makes your task a little bit harder when it comes on time to put the facings on the sides and at the top and the bottom. I'm going to be using uh, 3M specialty adhesive remover here because I want to get those black marks off of the clear vinyl with our Scryball pencil because they get all over the white vinyl. So there's some of the mark and all you have to do is just run this rag that's soaked with the cleaner and it takes those marks off completely. So you can see the marks on the rag. We're going to do it on any side that we marked. You may be asking, should I buy that specialty adhesive remover um, to just to get marks off? Well, we also use it to get any double-sided tape off of the clear vinyl if you get any on it. So there are two reasons that, in my opinion, you should buy it. Now we're going to concentrate on measuring and cutting the vinyl fabric sections. This is how we nested our panels on our sheet. You know, I'm only showing one panel, but I want to try to follow this rendition so that I can save on fabric because this is the way we decided that it would be more economical. So my first top section is 19.13 by 46. My bottom is 12.25 by 46, and my sides, even though this is right on top of the other one, is 77 inches by 5 inches, one, two of those. This Weblon vinyl fabric has uh, two different appearances on the top side and the bottom side, or the bottom side and the top side, because it doesn't matter which side is out. You just want to decide. So I'm going to, this side has more of a pattern to it. This side is a little bit flatter. I'm going to put an X on this because this is the side that I'm going to mark, uh, which is upside down, which means I have to flip my material. Uh, so I'm going to be marking my hems and so forth with a pencil on this side. And I like to put X's on it so I know exactly what side is the same. I'm using my T-square first and we already struck a line and cut off the bottom edge so it's perfectly straight. That's very important. Now we're going to start our measurements. So 46 inches is here. I'm going to put a mark here. And then I need to go about 19 inches, which is probably about there. And I'm going to put another mark here so that I can strike a line across there. Then we'll measure over 19.13 and strike a line. Now I am using a number two pencil, um, just a regular pencil, because of the fact that uh, I want these marks not to be transferred and to come off easily. I, I could use a scryball, uh, but a scryball just uh, gets a lot of black marks all over the place, so I'm not using that. So we're going to mark up our fabric with a pencil and show you what it's like before we cut it. Okay, these are the two 5-inch strips that are 77 inches for us. And this is the side that we want to fold to, so I'm going to put X's in the corners. You won't see these. I like to do that on all my panels so I know exactly where I'm going to mark for my hems. So I'll do that to the other two panels as well. This Weblon uh, vinyl fabric uh, does not unravel, so I'm just using scissors to cut it. No reason to use a hot knife. Again, use a good pair of scissors and cut accurately because you're going to be using these edges to sew and to line everything up. So take your time and cut directly on top of your marks that you made. 
So these are all of our panels. This one's uh, scrap. We have the two side facings. This is the top for us, and this is the bottom. So we've got all the uh, vinyl fabric cut. Up next, basting hems on vinyl fabric edges. Okay, the side with the X is facing up on all these panels. Let's start with this uh, top panel. This is the top panel, and your size may vary. You just need to know which is the top and which is the bottom. So for the top panel, we're gonna add hems to every, every one of these right now. The top panel, we wanna mark two inches from the edge, and I'm using the clear acrylic ruler to do that. And again, we wanna use a, a number two pencil, standard number two pencil, and mark it so that you see the line. And this will be folded over to create a one inch hem. So we're gonna to fold to that line. So now I'm gonna flip it, and we're gonna do the same thing to this side. Mark two inches up to create our one inch single hem. So that's the top panel. We're only marking the width parallel to the width. This is the length here, this is the width. So we're marking the width here and here with our two inch mark. Now let's go to the bottom and we're gonna do on one side, we're gonna do the two inch again. Doesn't matter which side. So again, we're gonna strike this two inch line for a one inch single hem. We'll fold up to this line. But then on, then on the other width edge, we're going to mark a line that's seven and a half inches up from the bottom edge. And that will be used to create our sleeve. So let's flip it around. And this time I'm gonna mark up seven and a half. So I'm gonna put a, a line there and a line here because my clear acrylic ruler doesn't go seven and a half along the one side. And then we're gonna mark to each one of these lines. So seven and a half inches up. Now we're gonna move our attention to the five inch strips that go on the sides and we're gonna put them across our table like this. And the X is up. You can see the X right there. So we're marking the correct side. And on both long lengths, we're gonna mark one inch and we're gonna be folding a single hem to a half inch along this. So one inch on all long sides this side and this side on both of these. So we're not gonna show that whole process, but that's what you wanna do. We'll start with the two side strips and what we're gonna do is we're gonna place uh, this ba seam stick basting tape for sale making in vinyl along the outer edge about an eighth inch or so from the cut edge of the uh, material. And we're gonna do this to all four sides. We're not using the seam stick for canvas and upholstery or for canvas because it's a little bit too aggressive. This part number 659 works exceptionally well for vinyl products. And you'll see that a little bit later on here. So down that edge, down this edge, and we'll do the same thing with this strip too. Notice that I break the double-sided tape with my uh, fingers, I don't cut it because it's easier to peel off the transfer paper. We'll peel off the transfer paper on one side and I typically, on this panel, I'll take it all the way off. Uh, you can leave some of it on if you want. And then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna fold directly on top of that pencil mark. And this creates our half inch hem. So that's the reason we marked the material because you can get a really accurate half inch hem all down its length. We're gonna do this to all, both sides I should say, but then on the both sides of this as well. We're not gonna show all this. After it's basted, I like to use the canvas patterning ruler and press it down firmly so that it stays basted and it creases that edge as well. This thing works really well. You could use your fingers as uh, just in, in lieu of this, but I love this tool. There, that side's done, we're gonna continue on. So this should result in a panel that is four inches wide, which it is, both of them. And what we need to do now is we need to mark it two inches up from one of the edges with our clear acrylic ruler to find the middle. 
and you're going to be using this so don't think this is a step you can skip you have to use this because when the double sided tape, tape uh, comes in contact with the clear vinyl window material it sticks like gangbusters and so you need to make sure that you have it all lined up to this line before you peel off the transfer paper so we're going to do this to both strips this is the bottom panel this is our seven and a half inch this is our two inch line I'm going to flip it so the two inch is facing me and we're going to apply this tape to this edge about an eighth inch away from that cut edge. We're going to peel off the transfer paper revealing the glue all the way off. This is our width. This is our length. We're going to fold this directly to that line creating the one inch single hem. We are not going to put double sided tape on this side at all right now. We'll be doing that later on, but after that, this is sewn to the clear vinyl. We're going to grab the top panel, move the bottom panel away, and we're going to put double sided tape here along this edge and here along this edge, and we're going to fold it up just like we did with the other panel. Uh, we're not going to show all this because the process is done in exactly the same manner using the seam stick. We're going to put double sided tape, this is our uh, top panel, right in the middle and we want this to go down um, fairly neatly because you are going to see this through the clear vinyl. So I'm just going to try to make sure it's nice and straight and uh, right in the middle. And at the ends, you're not going to see the ends because the ends are going to be covered with the side facing pieces. So I'm still going to rip it like that. Now I'm not going to put any on this side. This side will have the awning rope. We'll just call this side the side that has the window. And then for this bottom panel, this is the sleeve for the PVC. This is where the window is going to be basted. We'll do the same thing to this one. Double sided tape right in the center of this one inch single hem as neat as possible. Now we're going to sew the top and bottom sections to the clear vinyl window material. I've got my clear vinyl window material and obviously this should be equal to the side that is the width and see it's not. So that means the clear vinyl needs to go this direction because they should be equal uh, widths. There we go. So now is it equal? Yes it is. Okay, this is the side that has the basting tape. This is the side for the PVC pipe. So it gets flipped around like this and we will position it uh, right over top of the glass. This is kind of the crucial part because as soon as I take that transfer paper off, it wants to uh, get stuck to this uh, clear glass right away. So what I try to do is I try to go down and I try to push the glass down to make sure that's up against our outside cut edge and, it, it, and it's in an accurate spot. So I'm going to hold it here. Check. Yep, it looks good. So I'm going to hold it in the position here and I'm going to peel off the transfer paper while I'm holding it here. And we're going to do this in short uh, little sections here. So I'm going to peel the paper back. I'm going to base this. Notice it's flush with this edge. And uh, I'm going to peel back a little sections at a time. I'm not going to baste right here. I'm actually going to baste over here and push it down. And then over here, just like four or five inches or so to get it in position because if it's off, it's really hard to get off, off of the clear vinyl. Good. Now I don't want to create bubbles either. So you want to make sure that everything is nice and flat. Once it's in position, then I'll go back and pre put pressure all the way down a slink, making sure there's no serious bubbles anywhere. If it's off, this is a little bit off and you can see it's hard to peel it up, but it's possible. So I'm going to raise this up. That's why it's so important to have all your hems be totally accurate. There we go. Now I recommend that if your panels are less than 60 inches in width, that you put the bottom uh, panel on and the top panel on, basting it in place, and then take it to the sewing machine and sewing one and then the other. But if your panels are wider than 60 inches, then I recommend that you baste one on, whether it be the top or the bottom, sew it, then come back to the table and baste the second one on and sew it. 
that way you won't have as much material to work with. But ours is less than that, so we're gonna base this side on in the same manner that we basted the opposite one. We are gonna have a chapter that has to do with hints for sewing larger width panels. Uh, and so if your panel is 84 inches or more, you may wanna watch that chapter because it's gonna have some very helpful tips and how to achieve sewing a panel that's very, very large. This one's small, so it's pretty easy. Same process as before, and we'll come back and show you what's next after this is basted on. I don't know if you can see it, but we're slightly over here. The glass is extending approximately an eighth inch. Don't worry about that, whether it be your vinyl fabric or your vinyl glass that extends over the edge. When we sandwich this, we'll make up for that difference, so I'm not gonna even cut it off. I know it's weird we're gonna talk about the uh, PVC pipe, which is one and a quarter PVC schedule 40. Uh, we wanna cut this pipe to size before we do any sewing because we're gonna use this to roll our fabric uh, onto the core. So the width is 46 inches for our shade and we're gonna make it exactly 46 inches. This is a PVC pipe cutter. It's uh, made for up to two and a half inch uh, PVC pipe. I love using it because it just makes it easy and it also cuts fairly straight. It's not perfect, but you can use a hacksaw as well. So this just crimp it. And it cuts. There we go. I'm gonna use the 3M specialty adhesive remover on a rag. Uh, you, can, you don't have to have this to clean your PVC pipe, but I, I highly recommend you clean it off because it comes pretty dirty from the hardware store. Now, unfortunately, this is gonna take off a lot of that uh, marking on the pipe. You don't have to take all that marking off um, and it will dry uh, so it doesn't rub. Uh, as soon as the solvent evaporates, you don't have to worry about that uh, red mark coming off it won't come off after the solvent's evaporated. So now our pipe's clean. Okay, the outside surface is facing up. Our glass is on top of the vinyl fabric. Hems are facing up. We're gonna use this to, as our core to roll the clear vinyl window material. And we'll do the same thing with large panels. This makes it really easy to take it to the sewing machine and sew. So we're gonna come to our first hem here where the glass joins the vinyl fabric and we'll stop there. This is a fabric called Protect It, and I stitched on a loop a fastener system here, and then I have an adhesive hook that I attach to the underside of my table, and I use this because it makes glass easy to sew. Now, you don't want this to go anywhere close to your needle because you don't want to accidentally sew this into your fabric assembly, so I'm gonna have it be about uh, three or four inches or, or right next to the, of the uh, sewing machine and then I'm just gonna fasten it to the underside of the table and I have just a regular plastic tabletop here that I use for long panels and I have a hook and loop on this side as well so it's fairly taut. Now this transitional bump I don't like this I really should have some boards that would raise this up and make it uh, flush I don't have those right now I will when I do bigger panels but this panel is so small it doesn't really matter. So I'm ready to sew, and this will make it easy for the clear vinyl, which sticks to a lot of stuff, to scoot along our table. And then I have a card table with that uh, protective fabric uh, secured to it as well. Okay, this is some scrap Weblon and the same window material scrap. I wanna do a uh, test for tension first. We're gonna sew a straight stitch. So I'm gonna lower my foot and I'm doing a six millimeter. I'm using a size number 20 needle and V92 polyester thread and we wanna make sure that our tension's perfect. If you look closely here on the top side, I do not see the knot. The knot is buried. If you look on the back side, and if you feel it with your hands, the knot's just a little bit on the underside here. So I'm gonna tighten it just a little bit more to see if we can bury that knot. So I did about a quarter revolution, and let's just sew one more time. I want to make sure I have perfect sti stitch tension. Let's check this out. Not the top side looks good. Yeah, the knot is buried. I can't even feel anything there. So this is perfect. 
if this is uh, larger than, than what mine is, just roll it up a little bit to get it under the arm of the sewing machine. That's your only goal. And I'm going to line up the edge of the glass with the outside of the center foot. And I'm going to leave my stitch in the center position. And there's no reason to do any reversing because we are going to be covering this with the facing on the sides. So let's sew. Now you will have to help the clear vinyl. And I'm going to actually turn down the sewing machine up here because I'm using the Worker B power system. And I like to have full control, so I'm going to go halfway here. So no matter how hard I press down the foot control, it will only go this fast. And then I can make sure that my stitch is perfect. And I can kind of help to, I'm not pushing this in, but I'm making sure that it's not dragging too much. Because if, if you just let the clear vinyl drag, especially for large panels, uh, it won't feed right. So I'm kind of working with the machine it, at the same uh, speed that the machine is moving to move the fabric in. And notice how I'm keeping that edge of the glass up against the outside of the center presser foot on the right side. That keeps my stitch nice and straight. Wow, this makes it nice and easy. You could do this with the Alterfeeda LS1 sewing machine, straight stitch only, because we're basically going to sew everything as a straight stitch. No reversing at the end. Okay, so that's one stitch. We need to do another stitch. So we're just going to pull this panel back, and we're going to start at the same location. And this time I'm going to use the opposite side of the center foot as a guide. And I can see through the glass to see where my white um, fabric is on the bottom side. Again, no reversing. And I'm probably going to move the needle to the left a little bit uh, to get closer to that fold so I don't have any excess dirt falling into that fold, but I need to make sure that I hit it. So no reversing here, and we're going to do the exact same thing. Because the worker bee is set at a slow speed, I can easily guide this. So we'll pull the PVC out from the center here. This is where we sewed it already. And we're going to roll it to the next seam in the same manner. Now you may be tempted to just feed this underneath the throat of the sewing machine, and you can, but this stuff's pretty sticky. So I'm going to actually feed the long end in so that it can slide along our protected fabric. Okay, this process is done in exactly the same manner. We're going to sew uh, with the presser or with the needle in the center position. We're on the right side of the center foot, and then when we do the other side, we're going to put the needle in left position and be on the left side of the center foot. Same process. Now, because we're not filming, I'm going to turn on the LED light. Man, I sew with it all the time if I'm not under video, but it kind of messes up the video. That's why we always have it off. Up next, basting and sewing the side facing strips onto the edges. Okay, so now we want to put basting tape on top of our uh, facing strips. These are the four inch strips with the half inch hem on both sides. We're just going to put this so it's about an eighth inch away from the folded edge. And we're going to do this to all sides of these two strips, so four runs. Do not peel off the transfer paper at this point. You want to position it underneath, hems are facing up, glass is facing up. You want to position it all along the edge. And that's why we struck that line in the middle of this facing strip. And this side sh should be flush or slightly sticking out a little bit so I can see that where the tape is. So we're going to notice this glass is sticking out a little bit further here. We're going to compensate for that by having this be approximately a sixteenth inch away from the glass because we don't want the glass to be right in the fold. It just is too much material. So I'm, this is obviously more than a sixteenth because it's a little bit smaller. That's why it doesn't matter if this is over. So now I'm just going to press down the glass and make sure that it is about a sixteenth inch away from our center line. In other words, there's a blank space here so that I can easily fold. 
Okay, once I'm happy, now it'll still probably move around a little bit. Yeah, that's good. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold it with my hand like I did the other one so that nothing moves. And I'm gonna peel off the transfer paper, revealing the glue. And I am gonna go all the way to where the glass starts. So baste it down there and then pull this off to right where the glass starts. Because as soon as it touches the glass, it just hardly moves. There we go, that's nice and flat. Now, uh, before I stick any more down, see I'm about a 16th inch away from that line. I'm gonna stick that down and make sure there's no bubbles. I'm just gonna slowly do this. Yep, that looks good. That looks good, I'll push it there. I'll, I'll come back to that. Good. Perfect. Good and good. So now I'll press this down nicely and we'll move this a little bit. And now we just have the re remainder here, peel this off all the way and make sure it's nice and flat. And there's a teeny bit sticking over the edge. That's good. I'd rather have more than too little. Okay, now with this side, we can peel the transfer paper off all the way. Um, because we're going to start to match it up. So I'm going to peel this off and I like to start in the middle. That's where our glass is. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to match this edge with that edge. So I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to make sure that it's directly on top. And then I'm going to come over four or five inches, make sure it's on top, four or five inches down here, directly on top. And then down here and over here. Okay, so once it's on the glass, then I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna press down firmly, making sure there are no major wrinkles in it, and there are none. And this, since we left a little bit over the side, we can see where it matches up. See, it's, it's flush. And then we can press this down. And we'll do the same thing over here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Now I'm gonna go ahead and roll this one up going in the opposite direction. Uh, and I have a longer one and a quarter inch PVC for other panels that I have to make. Uh, it just, just makes it easier if you have a core like this. You could also use your cardboard core if you don't have the PVC, but because usually the fabric is shipped on a cardboard core. So now we can take it to the machine. Okay, now here at this side, we're gonna do some reversing. You can stop, start at the top or the bottom, it doesn't really matter. Um, but we're gonna lower our foot so the outside of the center foot is up against this fold. And I am gonna leave my needle in the uh, left position to get that stitch a little bit closer to that folded edge. And we'll do a little bit of reversing here. And then we'll just sew along this edge. We're also gonna sew this outer edge. Um, this is pretty easy here. Again, I've got my Worker B power pack systems on a halfway speed so that I can be very controlling. And we'll just sew this whole edge and we'll reverse at the bottom edge and show you how to do this edge next. Reverse this back. And we're going to sew next to that fold. And this time I'm gonna put my needle in the center position because I don't wanna to be too close to that uh, edge. I'd like to sew through the vinyl and through the clear window material. So we're gonna just sew with that uh, center foot almost against the edge of the fold. And I should have done some reversing in the beginning. I did not. I will make sure I do that at the end. Simple process, we're gonna take the core out and we're gonna roll it now this side is sewing on so that we can get to the other side and we're gonna repeat that process. We're not gonna show this since the process is done in exactly the same manner. In this chapter, we're gonna sew the awning rope to the top of our curtain. Okay, the next step is the awning rope 
at the top. So I'm gonna unroll this. This is the top edge and our uh, single hem is facing up. Okay, we're gonna cut it to size. Now, if I had a really long panel of 84 inches or, or up to 120, I'd probably baste it on and then cut. I'm just gonna leave a little teeny bit of extra. We don't really include extra in the calculator. So yeah, actually I'll probably cut it right to the end. Cuts with scissors. There's a little bit of excess facing on the side. I don't wanna cut it into the fold of the other one. So I'm trying to do this carefully. There we go. So now it's flush. I'm gonna put uh, uh, the seam stick across this edge about an eighth inch away from the fold. And the hem is facing up, that's important. We go all the way to the edge and then we're gonna peel off the transfer paper. Now, th this flange is larger than our hem allowance. Um, so what I wanna do is I want the rope to be right along the cut edge and I'll put it almost flush to the edge and uh, I'm just gonna see how much of the hem is sticking out and I'm gonna make sure that it's the same amount all the way across. You can strike a line there if you'd like, uh, if you've got a long panel exactly where the flange should rest. But I'm gonna do it by eye and then I'll check the other side to make sure that it's accurate. So it's basted it on. This is the important side. This is the outside surface. And you can see that the fold is very close to the rope, slightly off from it, which is acceptable. I could be right up against it as well, but I like it a little bit off like it is there. So we've got that basted on perfectly. Now we'll take it to the machine and sew this. To do this, I'm gonna make sure the needle's in center position. We're still sewing six millimeter straight stitch. We are gonna do some reversing at the beginning. The outside of my right center, our, the outside presser foot on the right side is up against the bolt rope, or the awning rope, I should call it. So we're gonna do some reversing here. And I do wanna do a little bit of extra reversing right there. Okay, now we're just going to make sure that this presser foots up against the rope and sew across. We're only going to put one stitch in this uh, awning rope. This is Ketter awning rope available from Sailrite. And when we get to the other end, we're going to do some reversing there just like we did at the beginning. And the awning rope will be installed. No reason to go with more than just one stitch. If you want to do two, you can, but it's useless in my opinion. Okay, here's what the awning rope looks like on the outside surface. This, uh, this edge here is not hemmed over. We didn't meant for that, so don't be alarmed by that. Um, if you'd like to hem it, you can, but it's just too bulky in my opinion. Now we're gonna unroll it and work on the bottom sleeve. At the bottom of the enclosure, we're gonna create a sleeve for the one and a half inch PVC pipe insertion. We're gonna trim off the excess of the, the facing so that it's flush with the bottom edge. Do that on both sides. I'm gonna put the seam stick along this edge about a 16th or an eighth inch away from the cut edge. We are not gonna do a hem here. The reason being is that uh, it's too bulky and this uh, just helps to, per helps to allow the uh, curtain to roll up because there's not a, not a double or a single hem here. So this is gonna be left raw, but vinyl fabric does not unravel. This line, the pencil line that we made earlier, is seven and a half inches up from this edge, which should give us a perfect uh, pocket for our one and a quarter inch PVC after we do our sewing. So we're gonna match it up to that uh, line. And I like to start at the center and work out to the left or the, or the right, doesn't matter which, making sure that it's lined up. And then come back over to the remainder and baste it down in the same manner. There we go. If there are any wrinkles and so forth, peel it up and rebaste. Now remember the hems are facing up. The glass is on top of the vinyl. That's really important. If you look at this side, this is the finished side. So the pocket goes so that it is on the same side as all the other hems. Okay, so I like to strike a line lightly on this side. Um, and I do that uh, at two and seven eighths. So this is seven eighths. So you can see I'm right up against the fold here and I will lightly uh, mark a line. And in doing this, 
it makes it easy to sew this down because uh, if you don't have a line, you just don't know exactly where you're going to be sewing it. So right there. Okay, we've got that line that we struck, so we can use that as our guide. We're going to sew directly on top of it, and we do need to do some reversing here at the beginning. So I'm going to hold my trailing threads, and then I'm going to sew. That should be sufficient. And because we have that line, it actually makes sewing pretty easy. All I've got to do is keep that centered between my center foot. And we are going to put one more stitch in this, but we're going to sew all the way to the other end and do some reversing. The next stitch, I want it as close to this raw edge as possible, but obviously not off of it. So I'm going to put the needle in the left position again, and uh, I'm going to use the right, the left side of the center foot as a guide, and I am going to do a little bit of reversing. And we'll sew along that edge. When you go over this bump, it'll possibly get stuck a little bit, but just push it past and you're fine. Okay, we're going to, when we get to the other end, we're going to do some reversing there as well. And this sleeve is complete, and we'll show you what's next. We're going to pull the PVC out. This is actually cut to the right size. These are uh, furniture grade uh, internal end caps or PVC end caps. Um, they're a little bit hard to get in, but uh, you can do it. I'm going to do it like this. You can use a hammer too, but look at that. It makes for a very nice end. And you know what that does? It keeps the wasps and other insects from building a home inside the middle of your PVC tube. Now, to insert this, we can um, put one of these on the other end. This is just, just some scrap of the same size. That'll help it to push past the sleeve or the facing on the side. So I'm going to insert it here and go past our uh, facing. There we go. Now we're past it. And that'll make it possible for this to slide in. And when we reach that, it should come through without any obstacles. It's a fairly tight fit. As you can see, we designed it that way, but we also made it so it is possible for you to uh, push it through. So there we go. And we want it equal on both ends. It'll stick out just a little bit and that is inserted. Now we got to do our twist lock fasteners next. Installing the twist lock eyelets into the sides of our curtain is next. We've uh, unrolled it, but the hems are facing up. The awning rope is up. We don't want that. We want these twist locks to be installed on the outside surface. So now everything, all the hems are facing down. At the bottom edge where the PVC pipe is, I'm going to measure from my stitch line and I'm going to mark it at two inches. Why do we put a twist lock there? Well, we don't want this to flatter or to flutter around in the wind. So we'll try to keep a twist lock fairly close so it doesn't move around much. So now we're going to go to the top. This is the bottom. So from the top of the curtain, not the track, so I'm right here, I like to put it at 16 inches. This is our last twist lock fastener. Now you can, you can put them anywhere you want, to be honest with you, but this is just the typical way I do it. If you want one up, up here, you can, but this kind of holds it pretty secure because this is going to be in an awning track, so it's going to be secured down and that should secure it well. So we're measuring from our two inch mark and our 16 inch mark at the top here and I get about 51 and a half. So for a small panel, it's pretty easy to tell. I'm going to have three spaces there. But uh, let's say it's a large panel, so 51.5, and I like the spacing to be somewhere around 16. So that means I have three spaces. Uh, and so what I want to do is I want to take my 51.5 and divide it by three spaces. That means 17.16 is our exact spacing for our twist locks. And that would put it right about there. So we're going to put a mark uh, close to the edge. And the next one's here. And then that should put this one at, uh, yep, 
about 17 inches. So one, two, three spots. That's one, two, three, four twist locks. And we'll do the same thing on the opposite side. I've got my clear panel up against the edge of my table all on this side. And if your panel's small enough, you can just use your T-square and you could go directly across from your mark on the other side instead of re-measuring everything and then just place your mark on this side for each one of the twist locks locations. Now, if your panel were super large and your T-square didn't go all the way across, you'd obviously have to measure on both sides, but mine's small enough. One of the tools I love is the uh, rubber cutting block, 10 by 10. Uh, this is just phenomenal to protect your uh, cutting tools. So we're gonna put that on the underside and we're gonna get ready to put a hole there for the twist lock fastener. And one of my favorite tools for that is actually, um, I don't know what it's called, twist lock fastener hole cutter probably, or common sense hole cutter. Four prongs and an oval for the twist lock. Okay, there's a, there's a hole here, a large hole that goes through. Um, that basically gets lined up so it goes up and down. And I like to put this prong right close to my stitch, but not on the stitch, almost on the stitch. And it ruts right, right over the top of the mark. And then just make sure that it's straight. This hole is parallel with that side. And now I like to put down a lot of pressure with my hand like this with my thumb over here and hold down really hard with this hand. And then I use a mallet. And I actually go through till it almost reaches the base. That way I'm assured that it cut through nicely. And voila. See how close we are to that stitch? We almost broke the stitch, but we were off from it. I went as close to this edge as possible. Okay, this is our eyelet and this is our washer. The eyelet goes on the outside surface, so through the four prongs, like so. And then I usually use a rubber cutting block to make sure I don't damage anything and roll it over. And then I put the washer on this side and I use the prong bender. It has a concave center, but you could use a screwdriver to do this exact same thing. And I bend it over directly opposite of the other one. It doesn't matter which top, bottom sides. And once they're all bent over, I pound it and the eyelets are installed. We're gonna do that for every eyelet location. Before we take the curtain to the job, we're gonna prepare the awning track, blocks, and lines. Okay, our awning track is flush with the end of the awning rope there. So we're gonna mark it with a pencil here and we just simply cut it with a hacksaw. So we're gonna move this out of the way, put it on the edge of a table, put a trash can below to catch our shavings and it really does cut pretty easily. I'm going to try to keep it as straight as possible. You can also cut it with a uh, table saw. Now if you, if you have this tool for cutting uh, PVC pipe, you can actually use it to cut the awning track. I like to do the curved part of the awning track towards the uh, um, curved part of the tool, but watch how nice and clean this cuts. So super clean cut and it's usually very, very straight. Beautiful. For the lines that come up, any panel that is uh, 84 inches or larger will have three lift lines. Any panel that's smaller, 83 inches and below, will have only two lift lines. Those lift lines should be approximately 8 to 14 inches from each edge, vertical edge. And we're trying to go with a middle section that is no more than 55 inches. The lift line spacing is also revealed in the Serite Fabric Calculator. Scroll down to the list of materials and look for leech line cord. Our panel enclosure has two lift lines. The first line is nine inches from the edge, 28 inches in the center, and nine inches from the opposite edge. The Serite Fabric Calculator automatically calculates for the size of your enclosure panel. So I'm going to move my panel back, and since this is a fairly small width, I'm going to mark it at 8 inches from the end of the awning track on both sides, the side as well. 
So why didn't we use 9 inches as the Sayret Fabric Calculator dictates? That's because we designed it into the software after we did this process. So that puts my center at around 30 inches, 29 and a half inches, th well, that's 30 inches exactly. This is a half inch uh, PVC Schedule 40 and I measured to an inch and a quarter and you can cut it with a hacksaw or you can cut it with this tool which we already showed. Three-eighths inch nut, hammer, in, nut on table, hammer, in. This helps to center the quarter inch lag. This is a three inch lag, but before we do that, we need to put quarter inch, uh, one inch washers on. Then we put our block on, then we put this washer on again, and then we go through here and we're ready for installation. So this is going to be installed in the awning track, and we will show you how to do this later on, but we basically want this to um, have enough allowance to come tightly against the awning track. So that means my hole needs to be drilled at approximately that location, and I've got scrap wood on the bottom side so I can drill right through that. So we, there we have a hole through. Now we also need a hole right next to it that will accommodate our lift line. And that's going to be in the center approximately one inch or so from that one, right about there. And it can be either on the inside or the outside, doesn't really matter. I usually put it to the inside. Okay, now we're going to do that same thing over here. There we go. We're going to feed the track now that it's drilled into the awning rope and this is the outside surface, hems are facing down and she fits beautifully, should go in just like this so the flange is, is facing the table top and then we're going to get our line and we're going to feed it through the inner hole. This is a 5 seconds inch Dacron leech line available at Sayrite, and it has been cut with a hot knife, so it might be a little bit tricky to get it through that second hole. I'm going to actually cut it with scissors, then I'll use a hot knife so I can get it through that hole with a little bit more ease. So now that it's through the hole, and notice I went through the back side, I'm going to take my hot knife and make sure I don't burn anything, seal that end again. If you seal the end carefully, you don't have a big mushroom end it'll go through the hole but like that that it that would go through the hole beautifully so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a figure eight come around like that and then feed this through and all i'm trying to do is keep that from coming through the hole and make it as small as i can i mean that's good enough but having a smaller tail is probably better so that's what it'll be like and this line will come on the underside and what we want to do to determine its length is actually go around the bottom of our uh, enclosure panel. Okay, and then come back and make sure that the vinyl's sitting flat and go back up to this location. And then I like to come across, uh, I'm either gonna have a block installed here and here or a block installed here and here. There'll be a third block on the outside, either on the left hand side or the right hand side. Since I'm not sure which side, I'm just gonna give myself extra line. So I'm gonna act like it's going out over here to this block, which will be installed in our mullion. And then I'm gonna come down to approximately half of the curtain height. And this is where I'm gonna cut it for this side. So coming down this side, I actually set a half, but I think I want to go three quarters just to have enough. So there's th about three quarter. And again, I'm not doing any measuring. We can actually do final measuring once we uh, have the window or the enclosure installed. Okay, so that's one side. So now 
Now we're going to do the same thing again with the inner hole. That's the one I usually do. This one I cut so that it's easy to go through without having to cut it with a knife. Do a figure eight and make sure that it's close to the end, right about there. Come underneath and around the bottom and then I'll show you what's next. Okay, again, since I don't know if I'm gonna have the block over here or over there, again, I'm just gonna give myself extra. So I'm coming up to where I'm, that block's gonna be there. I'm gonna go across so I can decide when I'm on the building. And then I'm gonna come down three quarters and cut my line right about here. Okay, we're gonna actually install these separately of the curtain. And so I've wrapped up the, the line to keep it on the track. And this will be installed. Uh, when we get to our structure. So we're gonna roll up the curtain and I like to roll it with the uh, PVC on top because that's the way it's actually gonna be rolled on the window. It's gonna roll just like this. Making a twist lock hard to reach pole is next. If the twist lock fastener is too hard to reach without a ladder, we're gonna show you how to make a homemade jig that will enable you to twist each one of the twist locks to lock them and unlock them from a distance. This is a, a two slash zero zinc plated steel straight length chain. And you can buy it by the foot at most hardware stores and I just cut a link off. And this is a nylon washer for a quarter inch uh, dash 20. And this is a quarter inch dash 20, and it's about one and a half inches. I actually cut it shorter. And two um, quarter inch washers. What I've done is I've taken a cam lock support pole, which uh, is extendable. And uh, what I did is I drilled a hole through it with a drill press that would accommodate my quarter inch uh, bolt. And what you can do with this is you can actually make a system that unlocks the twist locks. So I will take my washer and my chain link and put this washer on top like that and sandwich it between, run the uh, bolt through there and then run this through um, the uh, the pole. You could also use a wood stick for this as well. And then I'm going to put my nylon um, nut on the back side. And the idea here is that you can tension this. So I'm going to tension it so that it's uh, pretty easy to twist the chain, but yet comes under some force. And the nylon washer will basically stay at the appropriate tension that you've set it for. So I'm going to set this fairly tight like that. And then the idea is, can I twist this with some ease and yet have some friction? And as you can see, it does have some friction. Now I'm gonna take off this uh, stud on the top of this cam lock support pull. So you can make this on this stick if you want, or you can just take a piece of wood and fashion one yourself. But this makes it really nice to lock the twist locks that are high up or unlock them. If I had it to do over, I would have uh, put an extension uh, and not used this bolt onto my uh, chain length, which would have given me the opportunity to hold the board at a different angle. I did insert one nut there and cut this at about 45 degrees. So when I put this on this uh, board or anything, this gives me an angle like that so that uh, I can hold the board out. And you see the angle that I get? That'll make it a lot easier to undo the twist locks. One way to cut this 45 degrees, now you have to be careful with this, but if you have a tool like this, you can hold this into the groove. Just make sure you don't cut your fingers. And there we go. It's not perfect, but that'll work. Installing awning track is next. So this is where we uh, want it mounted and it is uh, centered between the window and I'm going to put a screw in the center first, just a standard screw and I'm not measuring the center, I'm guessing at it so that I can level it.
There we go. So we'll make sure it's level right there. And we're going to put a screw about an inch or so from the, at the end. There it's level and I'll strike a little line down here to indicate where that level, where it's level. Gonna be above that line, so right about there. These are the pre-drilled holes we made in uh, the shop. And I wanna pre-drill a hole here. It depends on your substrate to put the lag in. This looks like a cement board. We've uh, pre-assembled the blocks with the half inch PVC and the nuts and the washers with tape, just to make sure that's easy on the job site. And then we're using a 10 millimeter socket. Make sure the knot doesn't get buried underneath this. There we go. And we'll do the same thing to this one. Okay, so what do you do if the track is not long enough? Well, you just do an extension. Obviously, I have a uh, block here, so that secures the end. If it didn't have a block, I'd use one of these little small screws and then um, simply butt it up to it and screw it in. Make sure it's level right about there. And there's no need to do anything else to just make sure that there's a screw at the joint and the end, and then you're in business. So we're mounting the cleat. Uh, you can decide to mount, that's a little bit too close because the actual curtain's gonna be here. So I think we're gonna mount it uh, right about in here. And that's where we want the block to be mounted straight up from the cleat, where, we, where you desire to mount it. It can be mounted out here if you'd like, but uh, we're gonna put it closer. So we want this to be in line with the other blocks and be almost directly above where the cleat's gonna be mounted, which is right about here. like that one needs a little bit more tightening. There we go. Finally, it's time to install our curtain. So the nice thing about this is that these curtains can be removed completely because they just slide into the awning track. Now you'd have to contend with the lines that are hanging down, but you could coil them up and actually attach them up here in the summertime if you don't plan to use it. So they just slide into the track and you leave that line behind the curtain or the enclosure panel, if that's what you want to call it. And slides all the way to there. And you can actually install it from that way as well. Let me show you. If you can't install it from that end, you can actually move these up and there's a light here. Here's a great reason why you couldn't install it easily. You could do it, but it wouldn't be as easy. But you can move these out of the way and install it from either end, as long as you have a few inches between panels. There you go. So the one line is behind the curtain and comes around the bottom and goes to this block. And then it runs through that secondary block. that and then down the, through this block and down to the cleat and then the same thing with this line this lines behind the curtain and it runs through this one directly above it down through this and down to the cleat
you may want to install in the awning track to lock the awning rope in place a stainless steel screw. It doesn't have to be long. This is actually a screw for the twist lock fastener. That screw will keep the awning rope from sliding out of the track if the twist locks are disengaged. And I do it to the ends, about an inch from each end of uh, your curtain panel. So these are stainless steel fl flagpole cleats that are available from Sayerite. I'm going to drill an eighth inch hole. This is approximately where I want it. You can mount it to any height you desire. This is a stainless steel number 10 one inch uh, screw uh, and I'm going to just put one screw in first and cinch it down fairly well so that I can straighten it. And then I can drill my secondary hole with it perfectly straight and put a second screw in. Now you can take both your lines and make a figure eight and then make a loop with the tail coming underneath the loop. Now I like to make sure that everything is taut in the down position, which it is, and I like to cut the lines so they're even and definitely use a hot knife for this. Or if you don't have that, use uh, a scissors and then melt the ends of the line to keep them from unraveling. And then to use it, uh, we haven't put the twist locks in, but to use it, you pull it up like this. And if it starts to bubble like it is here, you just go up and down on the lines. So see it's bubbling? Just do that. And this has been designed so that the vinyl actually covers the entire clear vinyl window material, which actually protects it, uh, it makes it last longer in the sun because the vinyl lasts longer than the clear vinyl. Okay. So we'll start with the bottom twist lock here and make sure that the, uh, it's fairly taut. So I'm pushing down a little bit on the uh, PVC and it is centered. Uh, I checked on the other side and I'm going to mark the location with a pencil like that. So here's our twist lock fastener and I'm put a screw in it. And what we want to do is we want to center it directly over that hole like so. And we'll just Yeah, that's pretty much perfect. And before I put the second one in, nice. Then we'll put the second screw down here, making sure that it's straight. So the first two bottom are installed and I actually like to lock it there. And then we can just mark all the others, being sure that it's centered. And we'll put those in in exactly the same manner. The twist locks are in the lock position right now and the one reason this one's down low is to keep this one from uh, fluttering in the wind, but uh, it's not going to flutter much that way. I'm going to release it and show you how it comes off uh, each one of these. And I do have uh, that stick if you have twist locks that are higher up, if your window is really high you can use that stick which will show you how that works. So now they're all released. And there's no reason to pull the curtain off. It'll pull itself off of the twist locks. And go all the way up and cinch it down. This is a regular twist lock over here. And on this side, you can see it's a double high twist lock. Uh, it's made for two eyelets, but it's also great for places that uh, you have a mullion that uh, is higher and you can't get the eyelet onto it. So here's a twist lock fastener and you can see that the uh, frame of the window doesn't really allow the twist lock to twist easily because the eyelet's not sitting flat on it. It's mounted so close to this. So we're going to remove this twist lock and put a double high twist lock there.
So now with this double high uh, twist lock, twists easily. So if you have troublesome areas like this, consider the double high twist lock fastener. Got larger enclosure curtains? In this chapter, we're gonna give you some helpful tips. So in this chapter, we're giving you some helpful tips on how you can sew longer panels. For one, I take my tables and I put them end to end like this. That way for my long links, like this one's 118 inches, I can easily work with the fabric. Number two, uh, if you're marking long panels, get yourself a two inch straight edge. And uh, most of the marking on the material is two inches so we can fold it over to one inch. So I can just line this up against the edge of the fabric. So by doing this, I can mark long lengths instead of having to move my clear acrylic ruler several times. So those are just two simple tips that'll help and we'll have you more, more here in a second. So I have this edge, which has already been straightened, lined up with the edge of the table. Then I can unroll my clear vinyl window material and we measured 64. I wanna make sure this is lined up, yep, 64. And then I just need to measure the different difference. 164 minus 118 for us is 54 inches more. Now before you roll it up again to measure your full length, if you have to cut any off of the width, I suggest you do it now. We need to cut this to 50 inches wide for our application, so I'm gonna mark it at 50 inches and a few spots. That way when I roll it up, I don't have to do this again. So I've struck a straight line here with my scryball pencil and I'm gonna cut it, though I haven't marked all the way down its length. We're gonna cut this off, that way we can roll this up. So now you can take one of your one and a quarter inch PVC pipes that you'll be using. It doesn't have to be cut to the exact same size. And you can actually scroll up the clear vinyl like this. And that way it's easier to move it. It's just kind of like a Dead Sea scroll now. Even though it's crooked like that, it's not a big deal because it's just we're trying to keep it so it's easy to move the panel. <sighs> Now we're going to line it up to this mark and measure out the rest. I'm going to put a little table over here so this doesn't go all the way to the floor. Make sure our mark's on the edge and we'll confirm that once I get this rolled out to 54 inches. And here's where we need to cut it. Okay, so we have this cut to the exact size that we need it. I'm just gonna kind of roughly roll it up so it stays off the floor, put it on this one table, and we're gonna move this table so that it's going down its length again. So I've got my long one and a quarter inch PVC, and I have a weighted sandbag, and I'm using just brown uh, packing tape. And what I'll do is I'll start here in the middle. The pipe's a little bit too long, but that's okay. And I'll take my packing tape. I should have left this over here. And I'll put it on the clear vinyl window material, just a small strip of it, and tape it to the pipe. And I'll do the same thing over here. And this allows me to roll it without having a second helper. Now, if you had a second helper, you wouldn't need to do this. You could just have one on one end and one on the other. So right about there. Now I can start to roll this. I might want to put more here, but I think I'm going to try to do it without that. And I can just tuck the clear vinyl like so. Roll it, tuck it. Okay. If I put a, another couple pieces in there, that would probably even make it easier. Then I can move the sandbags put them on the floor. And now we can work with that edge down there and it makes it pretty easy. So there we go. We moved our table so that I had plenty of room in back and plenty of room in front because this is a 118 inch 
uh, length. And obviously I have the protected fabric that I Velcroed onto this uh, folding table. And I have a card table that I can move around with protectant on it. Remember, I don't have the protectant go to the needle. It is extremely important to make sure that this table that adjoins your industrial work table or whatever table you're using not be lower than this table. It either has to be a little bit high like we are here or completely even. If it's too low, and you can see I put um, basically some wood blocks underneath it to uh, make it come up higher. If it's too low, this uh, will, it will run into this, t this tabletop and it'll cause bubbles in the clear vinyl window material. It still may do that, but it's a lot easier to deal with. So now we have our panel ready to sew. And I do want to show you one trick about sewing long panels like this. So when you're sewing these extremely long panels, it extends past the table there. But what I like to do is I like to turn the uh, machine down using the Worker Bee Power Pack system to just a little bit above half. The reason being is I can sense and I can feel how the fabric is feeding in. If it gets jammed up because this clear vinyl is rather sticky on anything or if it gets an air bubble in it, uh, it'll cause the machine to basically start sewing really small stitch lengths. And what I try to do is while I'm sewing is I'm trying to feel for the fabric and make sure that it's feeding in consistently. And, I, and so I'm becoming one with the sewing machine. I know that's really weird, but that's what I'm trying to be. I'm trying to say, okay, I know exactly what it should feel like, because at the slow speed, it's easy to feel it. And if I notice that the stitch length is shrinking, or not as long, I will look for an air bubble. Usually it's right here at the uh, junction between this table and that table. There's no air bubble yet, but I'm gonna keep sewing, and if I get one, I'll show you. So we'll come back to that if I get an air bubble. My cameraman just said, hey, you're not going to get an air bubble because you rolled the fabric so tightly, and he's probably right. Um, I'm not going to get an air bubble, so I'm not going to be able to demonstrate uh, what that looks like. Now, I will say this looks extremely intimidating because it's such a big piece of fabric, but it really is easy to sew when you have a setup like this. So don't be intimidated by long panels like this. Okay, so we've, we're done sewing this one on and we have to do the other side. Now I've taped this PVC in here, but if you just wiggle it like that, it releases the tape and you can take it out from the core and you can restart this whole process by rolling the other direction. Now obviously I don't need to show all this. I'm going to tape this as well and roll the other direction so I can put the uh, top panel on in the same manner. And then when I get these two on, what I'll do is I'll roll this direction with a smaller PVC pipe so I can put the facing pieces on the sides. So those are the majority of the tips that I have for sewing larger panels. The process is done exactly like we showed for the smaller panel, but with those uh, tips coupled with the techniques in the uh, smaller panel, you should be able to tackle these just as well. Remember, they're intimidating, but they're easy if you have a setup like what we showed. So this longer line is for the larger panel and it's attached to that same cleat. So all I need to do is uncleat it and uh, roll it up. If it rolls unevenly, I just pull more on one line and if it, if it bubbles, I just give it a few little jerks like that and it rolls up nice and sweet. And then I can just cinch it to the cleat. But before we do that, let's undo this other one too and show you that. So this one controls the other shade. So I'll cinch this one to it. And then I can lock this one to that cleat. And there we go. Coming up next is the materials and tools list. This is the full materials list, but remember, if you use the Say Right Fabric Calculator, it will give you a complete list, including the quantities that are required for your particular size enclosure panels and also the number of enclosure panels that you need. On the second page is a list of continued materials that we used and also the tools that were used in this tutorial video. If you have any questions or comments about the tools or the processes that we used, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. 
Be sure to subscribe to the Say Right YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. If you liked this video, please give us a thumbs up. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sayorite, thanks for watching.